Hello, we're back and we're wondering who might be our next Ozeki. You know, other than Onosato. Sato! Hello and welcome to the Dojo here on Mr. J Wag's channel. We are back and we are in the middle of our mid 2024 sumo rankings. We have already recapped the charts of our tiers, so check that one out. But now we are talking about who might be our next Ozeki. Spoiler alert, Onosato, he's number one. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out a way to make this episode suspenseful, but it's, it's absolutely not. Onosato is the number one choice. Uh, I really don't see any plausible sumo future where a healthy Onosato doesn't make Ozeki by, like, the end of 2025. I just don't see that happening. I mean, it's all there. He has the sumo technique. He's had the sumo success. He's never had a losing record. He just won a tournament in his Sanyaku debut, and of all of his Makauchi tournaments, the most wins has come in the most recent with the toughest competition at the highest rank. Onosato, he, he's great. Don't worry. About him. He's gonna be our next Ozeki. Now the real questions come on who I ranked two through nine, which is a lot more than I usually rank. For me, it's the difference between who is a plausible Ozeki, which means like if the best case scenario happens, could this person make Ozeki? Yes. And then there's the reasonable Ozeki cases, where it's like, if this person does kind of the same thing they've been doing, we get like a little bit of luck, I could see them becoming an Ozeki. So the question is, plausible versus reasonable. So the wrestlers I have ranked six through nine, that I consider them plausible Ozeki, but probably not likely or reasonable Ozeki cases. Number nine, Gonoyama. Yeah, Gonoyama absolutely has a plausible case to become an Ozeki. He's still relatively young, 26. He is a pusher thruster, but we have seen pusher thruster Ozeki before. Hello, Takakesho. I just feel that right now he's hit a bit of a ceiling. I don't see him quite being competitive up at like the lower Sanyaku level or the Joy. I see him sort of hanging out in that just sub Joy Maiga Shira level, as I told you in the, the charts of my tears. I do see him improving over the next few years and having a bit of a Daesho esque career where when he turns like 28, 29, I think he's going to start inching his way up into the Joy and Sanyaku discussion, but he's not there quite yet and I don't think he's going to do it in the next nine tournaments. Number eight. Hirado Umi, I love him so much. He's my little Buddha. He's been surprising me, and I, I have been not very uh, optimistic about his chances, primarily because he is so small for a sumo wrestler, but you cannot argue with the results. He has gotten two consecutive nine and sixes up in the joy. Uh, he's gonna make Komasubi. I just don't see that frame getting double digit wins regularly at the top of the Banzake. We will see if he has another jump to make in his sumo. Number seven, Wakamoto Hadu. This one hurts a little bit. Anyhow, like Hirodomi, I've underestimated Wakamoto Hadu for years. But uh, I, I think his true talent level lies in top Maegashira, lower Sanyaku level. Now, Wakamoto Hadu has been incredibly consistent and an excellent Rikishi for the past couple years. But he is 30. He is topped out at 11 wins and sort of seems to live in like a 9 and 6 up in the Sanyaku, which is great. That'll keep you in the Sanyaku in the joy, but it will not get you up to Ozeki. I think we have seen Wakamoto Hadu's best sumo. Uh, I, it could happen, but I don't think it's likely. And number six, Abi, yes, another 30-year-old who's been hanging up in the top of the Maegashira ranks and the bottom of the Sanyaku. Now, I know Abi is technically on an Ozeki run right now. He's got a couple good tournaments, but those tournaments aren't good enough to get you to Ozeki. I've never seen anything from Abi that says, I can get a 14 and one. His style of sumo is too chaotic to have that kind of consistency, I believe. And if we just look at the last tournament, his best Sanyaku tournament ever, and it was only 10 wins, and two of them were Fusen wins. So while I do think Abi is very talented, uh, if a guy can't get to 11 wins of the Sanyaku, I just don't see him like averaging that for three straight tournaments in the Sanyaku. I love you, Abby. I just don't see it. Now we come to number five, and this one's a little interesting. I consider this the, the, the borderline between the plausible cases and the reasonable cases. Number five, I have the field below the joy. Of course, the joy are the Magashira who are likely to face a full Sanyaku slate, so we're talking like Magashira 3, Magashira 4-ish. 
Now, there are a bunch of wrestlers below there who I think could make Ozeki in the next nine tournaments if lightning strikes and they manage to capture it in a bottle and just charge through. Now, a lot of these guys are injured former champions like Take Rufuji, Wakataka Kage. We had a whole tier of these guys in the last episode. But I'm also including the young hotness down in the lower divisions like Onokatsu and Hakuoho. Now, I don't think it is likely that a member of the field can do this in Nine Basho. I just think it is more likely that one member of this group will do it than the six through nine rankings or below. That takes us to number four, Daesho. Huh. Uh, now, Daesho is also, he's been in the Sanyaku for a bit. He's 30, but I think the difference is he has managed to have a, a higher peak than both Abi and Wakamoto Haru. He's a guy who's shown himself to like have those amazing basho where he can get like a 13 win or a 12 win, and those are the tournaments we base Ozeki runs around. Now, don't get me wrong, 30 is not the best time to be starting an Ozeki run, but I think the next nine basho are going to be the last chance we see, but if a guy can get 12 or 13, I don't see any reason why he couldn't also get flanking that like a 10 and a 10, which might get him up to Ozeki. Uh, we have a number of Ozeki, so I don't think there's going to be a borderline case to be made, but I think he has the talent to possibly do it. Number three, Atami Fuji. Now, Atami Fuji, it's hard to see what's wrong with him. There's a lot of the same positives as I was giving Ono Sato. He's young. In fact, he's like three years younger than Ono Sato. And he seems to have a great sumo body, but he just doesn't seem to have quite the level of sumo skill. He seems to have stalled out almost exactly at Maigashira 1 at his true talent level. But I think he's going to make Sanyaku by the end of the year. He's learning. He's still very young, still growing into the body. I see 2025 as a first Ozeki run for Atami Fuji. And and hopefully it will be successful. But yeah, his number three ranking here is because he may not make it by the end of 2025, but I do see Atami Fuji making Ozeki at some point in his career. And then I guess drum roll for number two. I have as number two, Ozeki Wake Kidishima. Now this is a very tricky one and it's mostly here because uh, of the specific point in the timing of Kidishima's career. So he was an Ozeki and in the last tournament he didn't get eight wins after going Kataban. So now he's at Ozeki Wake and needs 10 wins to reclaim Ozeki. So a wrestler who's only one good tournament away from Ozeki, I have to say, is really close to making Ozeki. The question is, can he do it? Is he healthy? He has looked really terrible for the past two tournaments. Now, one of the great things about Kirishima's career is that he has been remarkably healthy up until this year. Can he get over and get back in the ring and get 10 wins? So much of the future of Kirishima's career depends on this. And yeah, the next time we see the rankings, we're, I think we're either going to see Kirishima up in the Yokozuna rankings or possibly off of the Ozeki rankings entirely. There, there's a very wide group of outcomes right now. And yes, number one, Ono Sato. I can't think of a reason why he wouldn't be the number one. If any of you can think of a reason why he is not the number one next Ozeki prospect, please hit me in the comments. I would love to hear your argument. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Dohyo. Please like and subscribe if you have not. That just tells the algorithms that more people want to watch the Dohyo and we'll gather you all into our warm sumo embrace. Stay tuned to the channel. We're going to be coming up with our next Yokozuna rankings very soon. And of course, our bolder -er predictions for the upcoming Nagoya tournament. So everyone, stay safe, stay strong, stay healthy. And I will see you next time on the Dohyo.